When I visited Taiwan last summer, I conveniently lived a 30 minute drive from the factory where my beloved Wabi frames are made. So Wabi invited me down to see how my bike, my Wabi Special, is made and to meet the frame builders who make it possible. Here's how hand built steel bikes are made as I have the privilege to give you guys a tour of the Wabi Cycles factory to show you what makes Wabi's so special. Thanks to Wabi Cycles for sponsoring this video and be sure to check out Wabi Cycles linked in the description. In the West a lot of times we have no clue about how the things in our everyday lives are made. It just shows up at a store with a made an insert Asian country name here sticker on it and we pay the price for it. We don't ask who made it, what factory in that country it was made in and whether those people working in that factory have livable, humane working conditions and make a fair wage. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. But after living in Taiwan for two years, I've learned that this manufacturing curtain doesn't exactly exist on the island where most of our mid-range and high-end bike are made. Everyone in Taiwan's bike industry knows everyone. Taiwan is the world's premier bike kingdom and everybody knows that if you want to have high quality bikes made at a reasonable price where you can actually stay in business, you have to go to Taiwan. But even then, the bike industry is small and everybody knows everybody. Taiwan even hosts one of the world's biggest bike industry trade shows, the Taipei Cycle Shows, where bike shop owners, bike manufacturers, component designers, bike marketers, bike mechanics, all intermingle with each other freely. And I had the absolute pleasure of not going to the Taipei Cycle Show when I was in Taiwan because of COVID. <laughs> To make bikes efficiently enough to go home and tie for the four day Dragon Boat Festival holiday, organization is key. Everyone who's involved at each step of the frame building process has their own workstations. Each subsequent station checks the previous person's work throughout the entire process from tube and lug prep to brazing to welding to alignment checking. If at any point in this bike frame building chain that somebody finds that the previous person didn't do their job correctly or within the extremely tight tolerances that are at times fractured of a millimeter, they send the frame back to be reworked on until it gets done right, no questions asked. There's tight quality control throughout the entire process of building the frame. The factory schedules different frames to be built on different days, and they even schedule it down to different parts of the frame being built on different days. The day I visited, the factory had already finished the chain stay, seat stay, and dropout brazing for the Wabi Special when we're finishing the front triangle brazing and putting the whole frames together. I got to see how the bike that I ride every day is born and it was sick. The Wabi Special Frame starts life out not in this factory that I visited in Taiwan, but in the UK, since it's made out of Reynolds 725 tubing. And Reynolds still manufactures that level of tubing at their home base in the UK. The lugs are set angles that come from another distributor. The angles of the lugs can't be changed here at the frame building factory, so the right part has to be carefully chosen to give the frames the correct geometry while balancing a desirable weight aesthetic, and cost. The tubing comes completely naked from Reynolds. Additional features like bottle bosses, rack and fender mounts, canty studs, and cable guides are added at this step where workers will drill and brace threads into the tubing. Workers use a pipe notcher, which isn't just the best X-rated nickname that I've ever heard, but this machine that cuts tubing to length for the different sizes of the Wabi Special and shapes them to perfectly fit inside the lug. Both the tubing ends and lugs are filed to roughen the brazing surface for maximum stickage. The first frame of each size of the model is built a little differently from each of the other frames in the batch since it serves as a template. It's first built with a dry run technique where workers hold the tubing and lugs together in a jig to make sure that all the tubing was prepared within their fractions of a millimeter of spec. The brake bridge, made in-house, is then welded on. The frame then, not even braced together at this point, just held together by pushing tubes into lugs and with friction, is then laid on top of a one-to-one -one CAD drawing of the frame. To make sure that all the angles and the tubing are within tolerance, and obviously I can't show you this CAD drawing, if all looks good, then that number one frame is then brazed and finished. The order of operations for frames that come after the template bike is built is a little bit different. After the tubes are cut to size and the lugs are prepped, a master welder and brazer with 40 years of experience brazes the special's front triangle together. Brazer must wear a welder's mask, or in this case, his favorite sunglasses, to see through the brilliant white flame and work efficiently. As the tubing walls get thinner, like with the Wabi Special's Reynolds 725 tubing, 
more skill is needed to properly braise the frame. The time and temperature have to be just right. Spend too much time or use too much heat and the steel can crack. Spend too little time or not enough heat, the frame's joints will be weak and risk separating. But meticulously use just the right amount of time and heat and you'll have a frame that can be ridden literally for generations, theoretically forever. Watching this guy braise was like watching a magic trick perform before my eyes where a bunch of steel pipes pass through his hands and suddenly transform into a bike that I ride thousands of miles on every year. The brazing points are then sanded to make a smooth surface for painting. Another worker then lays the frame on top of a one-to-one -one scale CAD drawing of the frame with jigs in place to make sure that all the angles and lengths of the tubing are absolutely correct. And obviously I cannot show you the one-to-one -one CAD drawing in this step of the process, okay? This is kind of secret sauce. <laughs> the brake bridge is the last piece to be welded onto the frame, machined fresh off the factory line, again held to incredibly strict standards. Finally, the inside of the head tube and C-tube are milled fractions of a millimeter larger than the specced part that it accepts. Then the frames are sent off to be painted. The thing that surprised me the most about seeing my bike, the same model, the same brand, being made at the factory was that everyone there seemed to really enjoy and take a lot of passion in the work. The level of perfectionism was absolutely outstanding and made me realize that I never want to build a frame set of my own. <laughs> On top of that, a lot of the technicians in the workshop seemed genuinely excited that some dude with a camera came to their floor to just see what they're working on and share it with the world. They very patiently and passionately answered every single question that I had, even to the point where I was probably slowing down their workflow, but they, they even went out of the way to tell me where to stand for specific jobs and to look at specific machines so that I could get the best camera angle. Like that is some next level pride and work. <laughs> Most people, including myself before I visited Wabi's frame builder, think that a brand like Wabi owns a factory in Asia to save costs. Their frame building factory then makes the bikes and ships them out to the store where us customers can buy it. But this is a pretty incomplete view for the way the bike industry actually works, especially for smaller brands like Wabi. Most brands don't even own the workshops where their bikes are made. Most brands like Wabi will send their own designs over to expert frame builders, usually in Asia, to save costs both for them and for us, the customers. Sometimes the brands will go through an intermediary party. It's pretty much like a a dealer <laughs> who knows everybody in the bike biz and knows exactly which factories would best build that frame set. Since a lot of factories specialize in building different types of bikes out of different types of materials, it's even common for a single brand to use multiple frame builders, multiple factories for their frame sets depending on the style of bike and what material it's made out of. It's better to use a master of one trade than it is to use a jack of all trades. Frame builders follow designs down to a T, faithfully bringing these designs to life from every tubing spec to every angle. With that said, not every frame builder is going to do equal quality work. A lot of the cheaper entry level fixed gear and single speed brands will use factories that are in China because they're cheaper to produce. But that also means that you get a cheaper made, cheaper quality bike. And I've actually stopped reviewing entry level fixed gears because they're all the same. A lot of these brands just use off the shelf components even down to the frame set. If you've ridden one one bike, you've ridden them all, they're just the same bike with different stickers on them. Generally bikes that are made in Taiwan are going to be higher quality than bikes that are made in China. But even then, there are varying levels of quality for the frame builders in Taiwan. Wabi uses a top tier Taiwan frame builder. Now I'm not here to air out the whole bike industry's dirty laundry, I just want everybody to know just generally how things work. Wabi's frame builder
Sandler also produces frames for some other top tier bike brands, ones that you and I are familiar with, ones that cost significantly more than Wabi, and of course I cannot tell you which ones they are. But the difference with Wabi is that they go to great lengths to find the best deals on materials and the best deals with suppliers, and they also sell directly to us customers so that you and I can get a top tier bike without having to pay top tier money. Perhaps I may be revealing how the sausage is made, but in my eyes, this is what makes mid-range and a high-end bike so cool. If things were to work in reality the way that most people think they work in their minds, it would cost millions and millions of dollars for each brand to own a factory and require them to produce bikes at a scale that's way larger just so that they can be profitable. It's just not feasible for the vast majority of people that are in the bike industry because we love it, not because we're in it for the money, to just own their own factory when on top of that it's really not necessary. Don't get me wrong, it's romantic and fun and amazing that people still make and ride bikes in their hometown or home country and I love drooling over Japanese or Italian or American made bikes as much as the next person. But realistically, how many master frame builders and bike designers are in your hometown or even your home country that one, you really love their bikes, and two, you can afford their bikes. For most of us, the answer is zero. <laughs> from start to finish a building, from when the frame builder gets the material into the door and a complete wobby frame can go out the door, it takes about 40 hours of work per frame. If I wanted a steel fixed gear now it's made in the USA of a similar quality to my wobby special, on the low end, that would be about $2,000 for a similarly specced frame set that's built in the USA. The Wabi Special costs $750 for the standard version, or $950 for the special edition chrome lugged version. And that's why most mid-range and high-end bikes are now built in Taiwan. It just makes too much sense. It's too efficient, both for the companies and for us customers. And if you're looking to snag yourself an even more amazing deal than the already amazing deal that Wobbies already are, Wobby is doing a Black Friday offer this week where you can get a discount on Wobby Specials and Wobby Lightnings in a pre-order on both frames and complete bills. Be sure to follow them on Instagram and check them out linked in the description for more details on their Black Friday special. Now on the flip side of the coin, just because something is expensive and made in the USA or whatever your favorite country is, doesn't automatically mean that it's going to be a high quality product. I know a local Sacramento rider that used to ride a steel track bike that was made by a local Sacramento builder. Multiple times, he's had to take that frame set back to that builder because it kept cracking under normal riding conditions. And instead of dealing with that whole headache, he decided to build an NJS bike instead, and that's what he's riding. You know who you are. Sam. Quality is quality, no matter what the name of the land that it came from is. Skill is skill. Whether it's from people that speak English, Japanese, Italian, or Mandarin and Taiwanese. Respect the craft, not the label. But if you want a Wabi special that's special and near and dear to my heart, you're in luck. This is Pete, my beloved special edition Wabi special that I've been riding for the past two years now. And Pete is up for sale, up for auction, for nonprofit. I originally intended to just hang up Pete as a frame set, just on my wall as a wall hanger, because there's a lot of memories attached to this bike. And this is my first collaboration with a company where we got together and made something really special. And then Wabi and I have been working on these Wabi specials with the chrome lugs for the past, I want to say two years, and they're finally here. And Wabi said, Zach, you have three Wabi specials. Can you stop hoarding them and maybe we can auction one off for charity, for a good cause, for Bikes Together, which is based out of Denver. They're a nonprofit bike workshop where people can go there, learn bike mechanics, how to work on their own bikes, get used bikes and used components for reasonable prices. So if you're interested in participating in the auction for Purple Pete, my beloved Wobby special, be sure to check out the link in the description. So Wobby and I, we only made 25 of these Karen Purple Wobby Specials. And Pete and I, we've been on a lot of adventures together. In this country, or out of it, <clears throat> Pete has been there, and he's done the job 
phenomenally. The bike has never let me down, and I'm just proud to be able to auction this off for a good cause, to help people get on bikes, to have a life, not on my wall, but continue to ride on the roads or off the road with one of you. I love my bikes, I do not baby them by any means. There are a fair number of scuffs and chips in the paint of Pete's. You're supposed to bang them up, you're supposed to ride them hard, you're supposed to push them to the limits. This bike has a story to tell. <laughs> Chip on the top of the fork here, I think I just clumsy and dropped an Allen wrench. Uh, there's a chip in the back of the head tube and in the head tube lug because in Michigan we were just hanging out before the group ride and somebody dropped their bike onto mine. I mean that's what bikes are for. The one time I installed a front brake you can see in the fork crown was when I tried to ride from Sacramento to San Diego. I tried to push this bike to its tire clearance maximum and that absolute maximum is 35 millimeters. Uh, that's why there uh, is some uh, rub on the fork crown. The dirt scraped off all the paint. Gash in the top tube and the top tube head tube lug because I was just filming a video in East Lansing, Michigan and the, the gnarly gust of wind just pushed it over and it scraped against the pole. Ever so tiniest dent in the top tube. Just like a little dimple. It won't even show up on camera. I couldn't tell you what that's from. I don't know, it's there though. <laughs> There's also some rubbing in the chain stay where, again, I push the tire clearance to the max. <laughs> you can see all these scuffs in the clear coat just because I lock it up, I use it, I park it outside. It lives a life. <laughs> the chain stays show that I use different gear ratios. There's some rubbing at the bottom of the down tube from a clip on front fender just because. I still ride in the rain. Probably my favorite part, this is actually just from riding a lot, when I track stand, so I'm a little um, duck footed, so on my right leg, the, my right heel will sometimes clip the chain stay, and uh, that's where <laughs> I've just completely rubbed off the paint on this side, <laughs> just from riding so much. Like it's really a beautiful thing when the things that we use start to take on our personalities and you can see all their idiosyncrasies and our idiosyncrasies in them and like again this isn't this isn't just a bike for me this is has been my partner for the past two years Fixie Frame shoutouts to Julian Corona, Brandon Black, Brent David, Mario Perez, and Ted Anchi for helping make these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.